In this video, I will be illustrating how to prepare journal entries related to the sale of a plant asset. We will look at two different scenarios. So first, let's assume that Gonzales Company purchased a tractor January 1st, 2028 for $60,000. The tractor had an estimated life of six years and an estimated residual value of $6,000. The company used the straight line method to depreciate this tractor. So first scenario, July 1st, 2030. So let's just think about that. This tractor was purchased January 1st, 2028. So to date, the company has owned this tractor two and a half years. The tractor was sold at this point for $40,000. We are to record all necessary transactions to record first the partial year of depreciation and then sale of the tractor on July 1st, 2030. So we're assuming that the company did take full years of depreciation for 2028 and 2029. Now for 2030, the months January through July have not been taken uh, through the 1st of July, so actually through June. So we want to record first that additional depreciation for this year 2030, and then we will record the sale of the asset. Here are some necessary calculations. So to get our six years of depreciation, remember for straight line, cost minus residual value divided by estimated useful life. Now, because we don't need to take the full year, we want to also multiply that times 6 months, which is divided by 12 months. So if you see that that's 0.5 or 1 half, then go ahead and do that. 60000 minus the $6,000 residual value initially, divided by 6 years, and then we're only taking half a year. And that's because, again, we're going from January through to June for this year 2030. $4,500. Accumulated depreciation to date has been $60,000, 60 minus the $6,000 divided by 6. So it has been $9,000 per the other years. So for 2028, there was $9,000. For 2029, there was $9,000. And now for 2030, there is $4,500. All of this added together is $22,500. $9,000. Let me pause. I stopped to add some numbers on the screen for you to, um, to give you a little illustration. So for 2028, $9,000, a full year of depreciation would have been recorded. 2029, same thing. And now when we get to 2030, we're selling this particular tractor, only half year is being taken. So a total of $22,500. And that's what you see in this step, the $22,500. So at this point, what is our book value? Cost minus the accumulated depreciation to that point. So $60,000 minus $22,500 gives us a book value of $37,500. So now, did we have a gain or a loss or break even? Well, remember back to the problem up at the top, scenario one, we're assuming that this tractor was sold for $40,000. So we can take our $40,000, subtract the book value of 37500 and we see that there is actually a gain on the sale of the asset with this scenario. And here are your accounts in the ledger. Tractors carried at $60,000. Accumulated depreciations carrying this credit balance of $22,500. When this asset is sold, this tractor account has to be zeroed out. The accumulated depreciation account has to be zeroed out. We also have to recognize the cash that flows in, and we're going to have to recognize this gain. Now we've recorded the depreciation expense, brought it up to date for the sale of this particular tractor. Now let's record the journal entry for the actual sale of the tractor. So remember, if you look back to the problem, we were told that $40,000 was received for this asset. So we're going to debit cash for $40,000.
Looking back to the accounts here for the tractor and accumulated depreciation, remember accumulated depreciation had a credit balance, 22500 This means we are going to need to debit the account for that same 22500 in order for that balance to become zero. So let's do that now. 22000 whoops, get back in there. $22,500 debit to the accumulated depreciation account. Then remember the tractor account carries a debit balance of $60,000. In order for that account to go to a zero balance, we're going to need to credit that account. When you start preparing your journal entry, remember the total on the debit side must be equal to the total on the credit side. So when we add up the debit, we get $62,500. I'm just adding $40,000 plus, uh, plus $22,500. So here I have $62,000. Uh, I don't know why I keep saying twenty. Sixty-two $62,500 over on the credit side. I just have $60,000, so I'm obviously out of balance here. So the difference I need to plug in here, back into it if you want to say it that way, is this 2500 It's ending up over on the credit side of the entry, much like a revenue would. This is one way I, it helps me to remember it. So um, this is a gain. If it's on the right, then this is going to be a gain on the sale. I have $62,500 on both sides, so I'm in balance. So this is good. I'm going to just clear those contents out now. Right, let's examine a different scenario. So now, what if instead the tractor was not sold for $40,000, but it was instead sold for $30,000? And we're to record these transactions as well with journal entries. So it doesn't mean it was recorded for thirty dollars and forty dollars because there's only one tractor. So let's assume it was sold for thirty dollars instead of forty. dollars Remember the book value just a few moments ago, we took the cost of the asset and we subtracted the accumulated depreciation to that point. I brought the ledger accounts back up just to refresh your memory. Okay, so noting now the accumulated depreciation is 22500 and this is after the June 1st, 2030 Entry is made and posted into the account. So we have $22,500 that must be removed with a debit to the account. The tractor was purchased for $60,000. That needs to be removed with a credit to the account. So let's take care of this journal entry now. $30,000 was received. Accumulated depreciation must be debited for $22,500. I'm going to skip this line in between right here. Go straight down to the tractor. And so the tractor, we're going to record a credit into that account for 60000 So when you prepare this entry, you will see you have 52500 When you add up the debit side compared to 60000 on the credit side. So we know that we are off. And it turns out that we are off by that same uh, $7,500, which is the loss on the sale. When you do have a loss on the sale... We just call it that. We create an account and call it that. Loss on the sale of the tractor or the equipment. You are going to need to debit that account. When it's a loss, put it on the left. Loss goes on the left side of the transaction. Okay, so now we've looked at two different scenarios. The sale of a plant asset. When you have a gain, which was the earlier the one we looked, the first scenario we looked at, and now we're looking at the loss on the